this is Alexia Tsetsis from TechCrunch, and I am here with Kerry Preet, and he's the EVP of strategy at Monsanto, and David Friedberg, he is the CEO of Climate Corporation, and you just closed selling your company, Climate Corporation, to Monsanto for uh, $1.1 Uh, This morning, yeah, we announced this morning that the company was acquired, uh, that we signed an agreement uh, to sell the company to Monsanto, so it's not closed yet, and um, the purchase price that's uh, being paid for the shares today is $930 million, Um, and we're keeping all of our employees, and there's a a program to make sure that all employees are excited about the future uh, with the company. So that was uh, just announced uh, a few minutes ago. So. On background, for for the readers that may not be familiar with Climate Corporation, um, what do you guys do and why does it help what they do? We make um, software and insurance products for farmers. We try and do two things for farmers. We try and help them increase their profits with our software tools that provides recommendations to them about things that they can do to optimize their outcome. What seed to plant, what date to plant, when to harvest, how much fertilizer to put in the ground, etc. And then our insurance products pay farmers for bad weather that could cause loss to their profits. So those two product sets that we provide are really instrumental in helping farmers with their businesses. And um, we were in conversations with Monsanto and other companies in the industry about potential partnerships, folks that provide products to farmers that help them increase their value. And uh, this conversation started to take place and ended up making a lot of sense for both companies. Kerry? Yeah. Why does this make sense? Well, it, Dave, David captured it really well. You know, we as a company are in business um, to serve farmers around the world. And as we think about the, uh, you know, ever-growing population, we're going to add another couple billion people to the planet in the next uh, two or three decades. And uh, we're seeing diets improve around the world. And uh, our job as a company is to help farmers produce more uh, crops. And uh, what David's team has done here, we think, is the next revolution in agriculture, and that's how to use information and data science uh, to help farmers make, um, help them make better decisions on how to, how to grow those crops better. So the fit between the two companies um, is, is really tremendous, and that's why we're excited about uh, being able to uh, uh, partner with uh, Dave's team here at Climate Corp. Now, Monsanto is not a loved company. Uh, the opposite, I would say. Why? Why do you think the PR and the the connotations of Monsanto are so negative? I mean, I think the first comment on the post is, "This is horrible." It's something. I'm not like TechCrunch comments are are you know the Bible, but I, there's a lot of negative uh, commentary around Monsanto. Why? What's your explanation? Yeah, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding. Agriculture is a business which, uh, uh, certainly in this country, when you think of less than 1% of the population is involved in agriculture, uh, first of all, I'd say agriculture is an industry that's not really well understood. And, and what we do as a science uh, company in this space is, is not well understood. So it, it draws a lot of uh, opinions and, and critics. But what I'm excited about as I think about um, you know, my family and, and uh, you know, everyone, the 22,000 employees that work at the company, they're very passionate about helping serve farmers around the world and helping them do. And that's why we got so energized when we talked to David and his team. Uh, their mission about, you know, feeding an ever-hungry world and do it in a sustainable fashion uh, is what, uh, you know, brought us to uh, saying, hey, with David's technology and what his team's doing around data science, uh, matches up very well with what we think is the next big breakthrough in agriculture to help farmers become more productive. Uh, and, and by help farmers become more productive, <coughs> what do you mean? And how, how does that play into the gen- you know, this genetically is, modified yeah, part sh- of the business? Sure. Th- this is, um, as we think about the farmer, uh, who is our ultimate customer, you know, th- every year um, on every field, they make 40 to 50 decisions um, that try to optimize the amount of yield uh, that they can produce off that acre. And in many cases, those 40 to 50 decisions are made a lot on I- intuition. Um, and they have all this information, but if they can have information and turn it into insights, they can help make those decisions more precisely. Uh, that helps reduce, in many cases, the amount of inputs they're using or using those inputs, as David said, fertilizer and other things more precisely to get more productivity out of that acre. And we think that matches up very well with what we do, which is help 
the farmers um, with better seed, as an example. So the two uh, very much complement each other. David's uh, uh, what his capability is doing and what, what we're doing as a science company. So how will you connect the big data play with the seed play? Where is, the, where is the exact connection between Climate Corp? David, why don't you? I, 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 view, I view them as complementary products. So a farmer will buy seed that is optimally suited to his land to help him make more yield, make more food on that land. And our service will help him make a decision about when to plant, how much nitrogen to put down, when to harvest, what the expected yield is each day so he can optimize some of the other decisions he's making. And so our product really complements what Monsanto's product set is today, and so we can look at farmers in the future as having not just a finger in the air to make guesses about what to do, but real information and recommendations about how to get the best outcome from their acre of land. And so our software really complements the product. Why would, on the helping farmers meant, why would people be accusing Monsanto of not helping farmers, of putting small farmers out of business? Explain this uh, you know, meme or... that. That perception. That perception. You know, I, I think again, I think it comes back to, um, you know, people that aren't close to what we do or what agriculture is. Um, you know, have taken, uh, you know, those things and and uh, overstated them. Um, you know, we fundamentally we, we help farmers around the world. And I mean, what is what exactly is the misconception? What are they overstating? Yeah, I I, I think a lot of people you know read uh, read things about uh, you know how we. Uh, we uh, market our products and so on and so forth and and take uh, one or two examples and you know overstate them because you know they uh, often they're critics of agriculture uh, there's some critics of, of what our science is um, but I think as you talk to farmers and talk to people that are are uh, you know working in agriculture um, they're very excited about the future of agriculture as we are they're very excited about science and how science can uh, help farmers uh, produce more and fundamentally feed a, a, a you know a, a growing world. And I think you know, the real opportunity here is we recognize the opportunity to go out and, and do more education and provide more uh, facts so people can make the right you know the right informed decision. What what are the top three facts that you want to provide? What are specific examples of cases that have been overstated in your perception yeah. in your belief? I, I think, you know, uh, one is around the science. Um, there's a lot of discussion has been around biotechnology as a capability. You know, as you think of biotechnology as a science, uh, biotechnology today is being used in uh, pharmaceutical, uh, you know, development in human health. It's being used in everything from making cheese and, and beer. Uh, we're using that same science to help improve seeds. Um, so it's it's uh, it's one of the areas that I think is just not well understood that biotechnology is a science that's uh, used in, across many industries and we're using it in the same way in, in agriculture. The other thing that we often have discussions around is um, that we as a company, our products and capabilities only serve large farmers. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We have uh, you know, um, millions of smallholder farmers in uh, markets around the world like India um, south and other parts of Southeast Asia that are using our technologies and actually have as much if not more transformation in terms of their productivity as, you know, large farmers here uh, in the Midwest. Uh, so again, it's just a matter of getting that information out there and we, we know that's a real opportunity to, uh, you know, create more dialogue uh, with people that are not as close to agriculture or what we do. So your your fourth quarter earnings were <coughs> announced at the, around the same time as this acquisition, and uh, there was a loss. Um, is is this acquisition an attempt to manage these sort of negative perceptions and show shareholders that you're committed towards a, a more technological future? You know, we're we're uh, really excited. Our our, our uh, full year uh, growth as a company. You know, we grew again over twenty percent. Um, you know, it happens to be all our, our fourth quarter is always uh, a, a loss. Um, but, um, you know, we are uh, in a growth mode um, along with agriculture. Um, I think it speaks to the fact that uh, we have, um, you know, information and, and products that are helping serve farmers. And as we look at uh, the combination with uh, the Climate Corporation in the future, we think this will add additional uh, capability for us to serve farmers. So we're really excited about uh, what this will do to continue the growth momentum that you know we have as a company which is fundamentally serving serving farmers. I, sh I should also say the thing that was 
that's most exciting about this for, from my perspective and for our company is that we can now accelerate our growth and accelerate the work that we've been doing. The Climate Corporation has really been a startup. We've got a great set of investors and Founders Fund and COSLA and Index and NEA. And a lot of those um, investors, um, you know, we have to continue to raise capital and have raised several rounds of capital to get ourselves to the point that we're at today. But now being part of Monsanto, we have the ability to accelerate our sales, go into international markets, hire more people here in Silicon Valley, and really grow the Climate Corporation. And Monsanto's made an amazing commitment to us to let us to continue to run independently, retain the name, the Climate Corporation, and continue to do the work that we do as an independent subsidiary of, the, of Monsanto. And so that's what's sort of most exciting about us. We can continue in our mission, accelerate the work we're doing, um, and really create new technology in partnership with these guys. I mean, are you okay with their bad reputation being attached to your company? Yeah, that's a, okay? that's a great question. Yeah. So when we first started these conversations, look, I don't come from the agriculture world, Alexia. Um, I worked at Google yeah. before starting the Climate Corporation seven right. years ago. And so, um, you know, I was reticent at first when, I, um, when we first started having conversations with the company, knowing very little about them. What little I did know came from my sort of tour through the blogosphere, I'd say. And there's a lot of scary stuff that's said out there. But um, what I came to learn as we talked to our customers who are farmers, this is an amazing company. And as we got to meet the people at Monsanto, it's a group of amazingly passionate, informed, and forward-thinking scientists that really are trying to do good for the world. I've only ever seen that at Google and at the Climate Corporation before. And it was so similar to the, the world that I've come from, the kind of folks that are at Monsanto, and it was so exciting. I was blown away by how different my experience was working with these folks and realizing what they do and why they do it relative to what I had read in short form on blogs and, and so on and so forth. So I would say that we tried to become informed about this company, and we really did our homework. And all of the scientists and engineers at the Climate Corporation got to learn about Monsanto and the work they do. And I think as you begin to understand the science and the technology that they've developed, it's quite amazing what they've been able to do and how they operate. And a lot of their business practices are well regarded in the agriculture world. So when you take a step into the world of farming, which is what 40% of the working population around the world do each day, you realize that Monsanto is the Google of agriculture. They are an amazing business, and it's, uh, it's really exciting to be able to, to join up with them. What, what are they doing that is amazing that the layman wouldn't necessarily know by reading the blogosphere? What is amazing? What is a specific I, I, I always, thing? I always ask the question, where does the reputation come from yes. myself? And you know, we try and we've tried to grapple with this as we've had these conversations. You know, when Galileo had a telescope, it was considered an evil thing. And, the, and you know, when microscopes first came out and penicillin first came out, people were really scared about these technologies. They were new technologies in the world. Just like when um, Facebook began allowing check-ins, people were like, well, now they're tracking us. I mean, there's always been some fear of new technology that enables new value in the world. And um, applying biotechnology to agriculture has been viewed, I think, as something that people consider the world of the unknown. But if you're a scientist and you understand the technology behind what Monsanto does, it's amazing, and it's safe, and it's great for the world. And um, we've really gotten to learn that. And I, 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 I think that taking the time to inform ourselves about that was the most critical thing for us as a company going into this. Um, and uh, they're just like us. I mean, they're scientists, they're engineers, and they want to help feed the world, and they want to use technology to do so. So the press is reporting that this is a $930 million deal. But from what I hear, it's actually a $1.1 billion deal because some, some cash is still in escrow. Is this correct? I don't know what the exact numbers are. Um, but there's a, a program to make sure that uh, you know, Monsanto assumes all of the existing stock options. You know, what we're, we're really excited about, as David mentioned earlier, is we think that um, Silicon Valley is going to be the hub of the next innovation uh, revolution in agriculture, and that's around information. So as we think about the future, um, that's as, as David and I and, and the teams talked over the last uh, several weeks, you know, we talked about, you know, how do we continue to grow um, what David has is, is started and uh, how do we attract other technologies uh, that we think can have an application in agriculture that are being developed here. And so as we, we really think about where this is going to go and, and the impact that uh, you know, data and data science can have on, you know, transforming agriculture and meeting um, what the world is going to have to do is get more productivity under, uh, on a fixed land base. That, that's what really excites us about 
um, you know, what David's done here and then continue to, to build this uh, capability out here in the valley. So what other companies are you looking at? You know, there's a lot of technology companies, and David uh, is, uh, um, you know, more informed on, on each of them as I am, but uh, we think there's a lot of, uh, you know, capability out here around information and data. I look at agriculture, I came from an agriculture background, and uh, as I myself reflect on, you know, farming and having spent a lot of my career, uh, you know, traveling around the world and talking to farmers around the world, one of the things they'll invariably say, there's uh, big challenges they face. The biggest one is how to deal with the variability of climate and weather. And uh, as we've seen over the last several years, we think weather patterns are becoming more erratic. It places a huge challenge on farmers to, uh, you know, with their, with their production. We think a lot of the, um, uh, you know, risk can be mitigated out of weather impacts through information. And if you know what's going on every day in the field based on climate changes, the soil variations that exist, that we can really help farmers mitigate some of the uh, challenges that impact their yield and in fact uh, help them make better decisions that improve their yield. And that's, so any information or technology that can help do that, we think can have a fit uh, um, in what we're doing. I mean, if you think about the first technology <coughs> farmers employed, it was a plow. And the plow allowed them to, you know, go through their fields in a more efficient way and plant seed more efficiently. And um, nowadays, farmers around the world, small farmers in India and Africa, are coming online because they're getting cell phones in their hands. And as that happens, they're looking for services and looking for applications that can help them make better decisions. Like I said before, more people wake up and farm each day than do any other thing. It is the most common profession in the world. And so as all of these small farmers around the world start to get mobile phones that are connected <coughs> to the internet, they're no longer just making random decisions, but they're looking for ways to make better decisions and get more out of their land. And so mobile um, remote sensing technologies that can re remotely monitor what's happening at a farmer's field, remotely monitor what the weather conditions are. There's a lot of great um, new satellite technologies that are coming out. Small satellite companies, microsatellite companies here in Silicon Valley are really exciting. Anything around um, predictive analytics, mobile applications. So, you know, it's connecting the farmer to, you know, bigger picture analysis of what he should be doing through a, a mobile, typically a mobile application. So, will you still be, will Monsanto now be selling farmer insurance through Climate Corp, which is what you already were doing? So what you were, we're doing? Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to, I mean, we've had a commitment and we're going to continue to grow and operate right. the Climate Corporation as an independent company. Right. So today we provide uh, a crop insurance product. We have our weather insurance products, which is what we started doing out of my living room seven and a half years ago. <laughs> it's crazy to think about. <laughs> and, um, and we've obviously got our software tools for farmers, and we're going to continue to do all three of those things. So uh, I was coerced to come in here because your investor told me that this acquisition was bigger than the acquisition of Facebook uh, or the acquisition of Instagram by Facebook. Can we name him? Yes, Brian Singerman. Brian Singerman. He's a he. He loves hyperbole and he loves um, these sorts of uh, stories. That's why. Uh, that's why he. That's why we love that him. Way. Yeah, that's why we love him. But if if uh, forty percent of the world population wakes up every morning to farm and not to photo share, then perhaps it is more impactful of Look, an acquisition. One of, the, one of the reasons we attract people that we attract to our company, Alexia, and they come to the Climate Corporation instead of go to the myriad of other technology companies that they have the option to go to in Silicon Valley, is because we think that the work that we do at the Climate Corporation has a real world impact. And that's what's so exciting about why we do what we do and the team that we've been able to get together, because we can see people in the field making changes having an increase in food as a result and having a real world impact and that's really what drives us. Um, so it really is, in our opinion, the biggest and most exciting problem to tackle and we like to, to tackle really big, difficult problems. Right. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank Thanks, you. Alexia. Thank you. So, I mean, off the record,